Hi everyone, since the last devlog I've been working on a bunch of major new features all relating to unlocking new items to build and controlling player progression in the game. For those new here, Lumber Mill is a factory builder and management game about constructing a timber production empire. The first thing I did though was begin work on a new employee design. I came up with the current look for employees quite early in development and it has a few problems. It doesn't really match the game's art style anymore, and there are some technical issues with it that I now know how to solve. I learned a lot from developing the original employees though, which I can take to create an improved design. The main requirements for the new design are, firstly, it must be smaller than the previous one, and it should also be simple enough that different animations are quick and easy to put together while still allowing for varied skin tones, hairstyles, and genders. After a bit of messing around, this is the first potential design I've arrived at. I want to make a few more before I commit to a design, so I decided to sleep on that and move on to the main features for this video, research and the tech tree. Before getting into that though, this video is sponsored by Core. Core is a free game development platform powered by the Unreal Engine that supports the entire process of game creation, from designing and building to publishing and playing games. If you're interested in getting into game development, Core is a great way to get started. It has thousands of art, music and sound assets all for free, which you can combine to create anything you want. In a previous video, I built this tropical island setting complete with waterfalls, all from parts provided within Core. There's no need to write any code, however if you do want to, Core supports scripting in Lua, which I use myself to build two Core games, and it's really quite versatile. You can also edit and remix games created by others directly within the platform, which is a great way to learn how they were put together. If you follow the link in the description, you can download Core and get started as a game developer. Now, I get a lot of comments about how I spend a lot of time reworking and redesigning features. And that's true, I do often revisit older features, but there are a couple of important reasons for that. I've grown a lot as a game designer since I first worked on many of the older areas of the game, and also good management games can benefit hugely from iterative design. Sometimes you get a feature just right on the first attempt, while others can take a few design passes before they can sit properly amongst the other interwoven systems. I want to show every aspect of development with these videos, and for a game like this, that often means making improvements and changes to previously visited areas. The reason I'm saying all of this is because in this devlog I'm returning to what has turned out to be the most tricky system to get right. I first implemented a solution to unlocking new things to build back in June 2019. I called it Research, basing the design on the simple but satisfying research system from Planet Coaster. You'd select a research category, set a budget, wait for the progress bar to fill and you'd end up with a randomly selected item from the category you chose. In the context of this game however, it wasn't fun at all. You'd often want a specific machine or item to be unlocked, and the game would give you something else entirely, forcing you to start again and wait for the progress bar to fill, only for another unwanted item to get unlocked. For attempt number two, I went for a very simple system in the build menu. If you hadn't yet unlocked an item, you just clicked and held on it in the build menu, paying a set fee for the research which would reveal other unlockables in the menu. This was okay, at least now the player had a way of choosing what to research, but it wasn't really an interesting decision for the player, and unlocking new things didn't feel anywhere near as satisfying or important as it should. At the time, this was really just a temporary solution, with today's major overhaul planned quite far in the future once other areas had been given attention. Now the game's finally at a point where I can consider research again, so let's get into it. The greenhouse is the main research building. A new employee, the arborist, works in the greenhouse to conduct research, each contributing to research points which can then be spent to unlock new items and technologies. The more you invest in greenhouses and arborists, the more research will be conducted. Before starting on the interior details for the greenhouse, I set up the greenhouse object in Unity so I could test the sprite while drawing. I added that to the list of buildable objects in the game and created a little test camp with a greenhouse. My initial reaction was that it was a bit too big alongside the trees and other buildings, so I lowered the roof by a few pixels and got to work on the rest of the building's details. I added vines to the outside of the building and tinted the windows a bit so I could make the back facing windows opaque, as transparency isn't ideal for performance in Unity. After many hours of work I finally arrived at these four rotations for the greenhouse building. As this building takes up four tiles rather than just one, each rotation needed to be sliced into three separate sprites in order to render correctly, 
as the rear of the building needs to be treated as if it's further back in the world than the front of the building. That meant adding three separate sprites to the greenhouse object, each with a lightweight component to handle rotations, which I originally created for the dock building. With all that set up, the finished greenhouse building looked like this. It was then time to put together the tech tree. If you are wondering why this devlog took me so long, this is why. I started with just some very basic UI blocks for generating the layout. I also set up all of the backend classes and decided to use a free open source Unity plugin called Xnode to make rearranging and creating new tech tree nodes super easy on my end. I added the basic node prefab to the tech tree generator so I could begin work on the code to actually generate the tree layout. Unfortunately, the problem that needs solving here is actually much more complex than I initially thought. I wanted to be able to set up the tech tree in Xnode without setting any screen positions and then get Unity to put all that data into a nice tree layout so I don't have to spend all my time manually adjusting positions every time I add or rearrange the nodes. After a bit of searching, I discovered the Rheingold Tilford algorithm, designed deep in the 80s specifically to solve this problem. Based on a simple test tree, I eventually got the tree layout working as expected. None of the nodes overlap and everything has enough space to breathe. So it was time to move on to the fun stuff, actually creating the interface elements that make up the tech tree. I started with the nodes themselves. Each node has an icon, unlock cost shown in research blue and a localized title. Localization is handled by a custom component I built a few months back and I also added a progress bar which fills as the player unlocks a node, masking the price text so that it can change color at the bar's boundary. I kept the click and hold action from the previous system as it's important to ensure the player doesn't accidentally spend their hard earned research points by misclicking and also to build a bit of tension before the payoff of actually unlocking the node. Another key part of this interface is the information box which displays next to nodes when you hover over them. This gives all of the detailed information about the node. A text description of the node and a list of all the items that are unlocked. All of this data is grabbed from the Xnode graph and laid out nicely in this interface. I added mouse events to the nodes which will update the info box on mouse over. To test that properly, I created a detailed tech tree node for the root with a title, description and list of unlocks. I added the title and description to the game's text file, linked them by ID in the Xnode tree and the interface worked quite nicely. It follows the mouse but never obscures the node you're hovering over so that you can see the unlock bar and cost. You may have noticed there aren't any lines between the nodes in the tree, so that's what I'll add next. This is also where Unity gave me some big headaches, as the built-in line renderer doesn't play nicely with UI at all. After many frustrating attempts, I eventually found the free UI extensions package, which has a nice UI line renderer. The first basic lines look like this, and I also added a blue outline effect to give a bit more feedback to mouse over for unlockable nodes in the tree. I then got to work on the ability to actually click and hold to unlock. On first attempt, I made the classic mistake of mixing up X and Y, while also managing to get the bars the wrong way around in Unity. I was clearly not having the best day in my programming career, so decided to leave it there for the evening. When I returned, I got everything working and added a third gold outline layer to display unlocked nodes. I also added a gold bar underneath the blue unlock bar, which will appear on unlock. Here's how that looked. I came up with three variations of the unlocking sequence. For the first, the lines between nodes don't change at all. For the second, blue lines indicate nodes that are unlockable and gold indicates nodes that have already been unlocked. I also created a third where the lines between nodes have outlines, but after a lot of time staring at each, decided that variation two was the best, with this being the final result. Do let me know in the comments what your preference is though. I also added a heads up display which replaces the game's main amber and date monitors, displaying the player's research points and a title for the research tree. With the UI finished at last, I put together the first version of the game's actual research tree, with a root node unlocked by default, containing all the basic objects needed for a mill, and a few branching paths for different items and technologies. I do intend to expand this quite a bit by release though, especially as I'll be moving towards content creation for the game soon as many of the key systems are now implemented. The last thing to do for this devlog is to get set up for the new Arborist employee to actually start conducting research. I added an Arborist job type, set up the template containing all of the data needed for generating Arborists and added that template to the employee generator. 
I also created a very temporary arborist object, taking the default lumberjack outfit and giving it a green tint. Obviously, this will be replaced by an actual arborist design when I replace the employee art in the near future. And there you have it, arborists now appear in the higher interface. I'm planning on maybe adding another job or two for arborists to do later down the line and will be actually getting them to conduct research in the next devlog. Remember to subscribe to follow along as the development of Lumbermill progresses. The best thing you can do though is wishlist Lumbermill on Steam. It's free, helps me a lot and means you'll be notified when the game comes out or goes on sale. If you'd like to get into game development yourself, remember to download Core at the link in the description. Special thanks for this video go to my patrons as always for supporting the game and channel. In particular, I'd like to thank WarnerM14, Ojo Marin, Hayden, BratFanaTV, HPR, Justin Atom, Kleb, Archie V, Chris Naismith, Mike James, Pepper Trollman, BD Smith, Lego Nerd, and Dominic. That's all for this video. If you liked it, remember to subscribe, and I shall see you here next time. Thanks for watching.